before you get into the learning zone from JSS instructors, you should be asking yourself a question, why do you need to learn about CMD? First, you're going to come across this type of uh, writings and descriptions. So number one, we're, we're trying to teach you the skills so you can get confident with these descriptions. So one is simply you're countering the descriptions, right? You're getting more confident. The second reason is that it doesn't matter what level you are on in IT, whether you're a help desk, whether you are that extreme master level engineer, you still need to know about CMD. Ping is something that you're going to do on, almost on a daily basis if you're working at the engineer level, working with Cisco routers or switches, working with servers, working with whatever you can name it in front of me. Even in, at cloud level, you're going to come across command line. Now, there are different types of command lines. We know that. We understand that. There are more advanced things going on in the market right now. Like, for example, a lot of people will suggest you, well, if you're learning about CMD, then just go straight to PowerShell. We don't do that in this, in these type of trainings uh, because our goal is start from something that is heavily being used for, uh, in reality. And then if you want to learn something more advanced, then tackle that later on. So if you're new, you're going to learn about CMD first. It's going to give you the idea. It's going to, it's going to show you how easy it is to use a command line. And then you move on to more something more advanced. Because though, that's, that's how it's designed. Things are designed from little basics to more advanced later on. So it's important for you to learn CMD because you're going to use it if you want to make your job easy. You're going to use it if you want to become little more experience doing things because later on you may want to get into more command line scripting uh you know tools like that where you are working with cloud type of technologies and you don't want to be relying on just a web browser anymore you want to do things from a command line so that's later on stuff but for now you need to know the basics of ip config ping you know all that stuff you're going to learn from this whole course and once you finish this course i feel like you're going to have a very good idea uh, practical knowledge on how to do this now if you have a lab access sandbox labs lab access if you let's say bought the light membership plus membership even premium it doesn't matter you have machines here and every machine will come with a command line so you can open a server to open a cmd you can open a computer but since these are domain joined machines and some are not you can actually utilize what you learn from this course to find out about Active Directory users, informations, and, and expand your knowledge. This means that you have the tools and that, that, that already comes with the Active Directory and everything is in there. So then go ahead online and then try to come up with more skills and build your skills on top of uh, your what you learn from these videos. So this way you, you, will, you will have a very extensive knowledge on CMD and this course will be used in multiple courses, network engineer course, sysadmin course. It doesn't matter. Every course that we teach it, that's going to be technical. This You will find the same video in there. So now, uh, instructor will take over and go log with this. Hello, all viewers. And we are going to start this new course named CMD. And the course name is Introduction to the CMD, Command Prompt, Why and How to Learn CMD. So throughout this course, you will find that we will show you the importance of command line and we will also address all the answers that you raised the question about that why we use CMD and what sort of uses we have to use CMD in our daily tasks, daily operation. So let's start with the basic detail about the CMD, what it is. So as you know that before operating system, the Windows operating system, we have the DOS disk operating system and it behaves as an operating system. But what it contains, it's look like a black screen where you could type text in form of instruction. So you must know the command to run that operating system. If anybody, let's say for example, doesn't have idea or don't know about the command so that kind of person enabled to use that computer machine so this is the basic difference between the command line and the windows operating system is what that in the command line you only have this black screen and where you could go with the commands with the text and in the graphical user interface as i'm going to show you here you can see that this is the graphical user interface you have windows 
10 offering system right now and there you can see if I click on the start window it will display multiple applications at once and only I have to use mouse pointer to open any application or even if I want to delete or add any files so what I need to do is just open the file explorer and in a in a glance it just open in an instant it just open the whole directory in front of me and that here you can see if I click to this PC and go to the C drive so it will start showing me all the content all the other directories that is the part of your C drive and easily you can right click on any of the folder any directory and decide what you want to do with that directory like you can cut copy delete or if you want to check the properties of that directory you can go simply in the graphical user interface unlike in the command line you need to know the command of each operation let's say if I open the command prompt here and just check things here so as you can see on the command prompt that I have the administrator prompt here now here you only you can use this application by tapping the command let's say if I want to clear the screen so I must know the CLS command clear a screen command so you will find that the command line is not user friendly but you can do a lot more things you can even use this command line as your basic operating system because why I'm teaching this course why I'm designing this course for you because in many organizations they are moving toward the server core product and what is the server core product it is different with the Windows server operating system here you will find the command prompt and the PowerShell now the question is raised what is the PowerShell and what is the difference between the command line and the PowerShell let me show you how the PowerShell looks like if I type here Windows so it gonna suggest me in the second option Windows PowerShell so the major difference you can see here is in the color now the color of the PowerShell is like blue and you will find the black color in the command line but that's that's not the main difference this is the difference of color here you can see there's a mentioning of PS so you can even open the PowerShell on the command line and the way to judge that whether this is a command prompt or this is the PowerShell you can judge with the prompt you will find PS in the beginning that tells that this is a PowerShell mode so if you go with the name as the name suggests the PowerShell what it tells that here on the PowerShell you can do wonders you can manage things you can run objects and it is more friendly when you are running a script on your operating system this is not being easily done on the command line so this is the major difference and there are so many differences between the command line and the PowerShell but as for this introductory video and our focus is on the command line the CMD so that's why we're going to explore this later what is the major difference between the PowerShell and the command line but as for this introductory video you only need to know that the PowerShell allows you to run a script and it can run different batch file by the command line because it is originated with the Microsoft company it is designed and provided by the Microsoft that's why it runs only basic instruction and if you further explore the differences between the PowerShell and here so you will find that it is a task based command line interface and use also used for a scripting environment and it is based on dotnet framework but unlike command prompt it is just the line interpreter for the Microsoft Windows operating system so there are so much difference and you can also call the commands of the PowerShell as a command lens but in the command line in this command prompt the commands are just called commands so this is the major and the basic difference but there are a lot more differences that are just beyond this moment beyond this video we will discuss later but during this course you will find that how we are showing things to you and how we are making this thing important for you because command line will help you in doing networking you can do so much work so much tasks related to the networking even you can fix issues you can use the command line in hacking and mostly you will find the command line interface in the routers in the networking sector here they provide the command line where you need to know such basic commands to see the router properties and similarly we will talk about all those commands that are used in the Windows environment in the command line 
to do further things like delete directory, add directory, and format partition. And there are a lot more things that we're going to cover to deal with the basic file commands, how to make folder operations, how to create folder, and how to copy files, how to move files, and how to delete files and the folder in the command prompt. So let's go back to the desktop environment and let's open the command prompt to further show you the operations and the steps. Now here I have this Windows 10 desktop machine and here in type here to search I'm going to type CMD to show you these commands and their functions. So here, once you open the command prompt in your Windows 10, you will find that it shows the administrator prompt. Sometimes it came with the system 32 that depend if you open your command prompt as the administrator privilege. Let me show you. It is a little advanced thing, but you need to know at this level. If you right click on the command prompt, so you will find this run as administrator. So this command prompt that you opens on the administrator privilege have some other powers you could say have some other privileges to run things to execute files but here as for this lab we're going to just focus on the copy delete cd those basic command that can easily be executable on any level any privilege of the command prompt so as you can see that the whole tree of the directory is the originated directory is the C where you have the, your operating system then you have user folder and in the user folder you have administrator folder so this is the tree of directory let's say if you want to go to the user directory right if you want to change your current directory and you want to go to directly to the user not to the parent directory so the command you're going to use is CD double dot and if you press enter so you can see that you just directly jump to your user directory let's say if you are in the user directory and you want to see the content that both sort of file and folder are there in the user so type dir and you will see the contents the folders the files you have in your user directory so here you can see you have admin definitely this is the admin account the administrator this is another admin account a new pod is field g's field these all are what the user account this is the same folder that we access in a GUI way let me show you if you are getting confused if you go to this PC and go to the C drive and there's a user and here you can see the list of directories the folders that are actually the account folder they contain all the data all the activity does in the account like the pictures videos let's say if I open the a new port so you will see the content like the desktop documents download so whatever the user is doing like you know downloading files making documents or just downloading music or making pictures so you can access all such contents from your administrator account from your C drive so this is that specific user folder that we are dealing right now in the CMD so so here what you're gonna do so if you want to go to any of the directory here listed so what you're gonna do is just type CD space admin and press enter so you are in this admin directory so which command is used to go in any directory to open any folder CD space and that specific folder name and let's say if you want to go back to your parent directory which is the C here so you're gonna type CD backslash enter so it gonna took you directly to your parent directory which is the C so have you got this idea that if you want to jump directly to your parent directory so you should use CD backslash so it is simple so let's say if I want to see the contents of the C drive so what command I'm gonna use is DIR directory right 
So here we have preferred logs, program files, users, windows. There are four, three or four folders here, right? So let's say if I want to go back to the user, so which command I'm going to use CD users, right? Then if I want to go to the administrator account, so what I'm going to type administrator admin is trader enter now you are on the administrator account so if I want to check the directories the subdirectories of the administrator so I'm gonna find these so right now I want to go to the desktop to do some other stuff CD desktop so here you can see I am in this desktop directory this is the same desktop you are seeing here behind the CMD application so let's say if you wanna make any new folder in the desktop so which command you're gonna use mkdir and that specific name let's say I'm gonna type JSS enter so there's a folder JSS is being created at the back of your screen means on the desktop folder let's look at here right so if I want to go to that folder so which command I'm gonna use CD JSS enter so there you go I am and I'm in the directory I'm in the JSS so so it's simple now let's say if I want to change the name of that folder and as you can see if I want to go back one step back to that directory what I did CD double dot that means it will take me one step back directory to the JSS so if I want to change the name of this folder so what I'm gonna type is REN space JSS which is the previous name and type PLEPS enter so there you go the file name the folder name is totally changed with the execution of enter so that's how the command prompt work that's how the command line works so let's say if I want to create a new file in this JSS in this PLAB so what I'm gonna do is type CD space PLAPS because the file name is changed now and let's get in that directory now here what I'm gonna type type space null greater than sign space type the file name and this would be JSS dot pptx enter so it's gonna create this file and if you wanna check just type dir and there you go this is the file you recently created so let's say if you wanna change the file name so you will use the command ren rem rename space jss dot pptx space and you could name it as plab dot pptx enter so there you go the file name is changed and if you type dir so you can easily view that file here that the plab dot pptx so this is the change happen once you execute this rename command now let me show you how to copy the file how to delete and how to move the file so if I wanna go back one step back to that directory I wanna make another folder so which command I'm gonna use mkdir space JSS now you will see another folder on your desktop and why I created this folder to copy and move the file from PLAPS to JSS alright so to copy the file from any folder you must go to the CD PLAPS this is the folder that contain the file and the command I'm gonna use copy space PLAB dot pptx space and the destinated folder so you can see the fun file is copied that's the process to copy any file from any location now let me show you how to delete the file so first I will go to the DIR 
to check the file existence. Yes, there is. One file is the PLAB and another file is JSS. We have two files here. So what I'm going to do is simply delete the file type del space PLAB dot pptx enter and there you go the file is successfully deleted now if I type dir to see so there's only JSS folder here and there's no any other file located here so here there's nothing no any file so let me create the file first type space null greater than space plab dot pptx enter now oh, there you go the file is created now it's time to move the file because we show you how to copy how to delete and now it's time to learn how to move the file from one folder from one directory to another now there's the file and I'm gonna type move space plab dot pptx all right pptx space and now here I'm gonna type the new folder name plabs enter now the one file is move now here in the last let's cover the last command and that the command is used to remove the directory and the folder and the command is rm if you wanna delete any directory you should type rm dir space JSS and it will quickly delete the directory but before that you need to clean that directory so let's go to that directory CD JSS and type dir to check the content and here you have plabs file so let's start type del space plabs enter now the directory is deleted it's not the file it's the directory and then it's time to delete the JSS so CD and then type rmdir space JSS enter and now it's gonna totally clean totally delete that directory from your desktop how to manage task and services in the Windows but by using the command line the CMD so let me take you to the practice labs portal and then show you what I'm talking about so here I have this Windows 10 machine and let me explain you that what is task and what are services if we talk about the GUI the graphical user interface so if you right click on your taskbar so you will find this task manager and if we explore the word, word task, task means there is something going on, means you are doing something, an activity is going on in your machine. Like in your daily life, task is what, what you have to do, what is your intention to do something. So task is that. In the same way, in the computer system, there are a lot more tasks, a lot more services that started with the logging on of the machine let's say for example when you type your password and username to log on there are pre built-in services and tasks that needs to run to show you the proper graphical user interface desktop so right now if you are easily watching your desktop like that because there are a lot more services that are running in the background and there are bunch of tasks there are th those are also running in the background and making it possible for you to easily use this graphical user interface because it is not the colors right now there are bunch of services and tasks making it possible for you to so see things like that so here in the task manager you can see that even we didn't open any application we didn't start it anything but there are bunch of tasks are running here and a lot of per processes are going on and these are the backup and supported tasks and services that are supporting this desktop feature this graphical user interface thing 
and if I click to the services the last tab so you you're gonna see that there are bunch of services that are running here you can see and a couple of services are stop and some are ready to start but there are in majority there are in the vast number services are running why because these services are running in the background and just maintaining and managing this whole user interaction based desktop that's why those all services are really needed and essential to use this graphical user interface now as for this video I'm going to show you how to control how to manage all those tasks services through CMD the command line so let me close this task manager from here and there I'm gonna type CMD type here on search and this time I'm gonna open it as administrator privilege why the question is raised why I'm opening it with the administrator privilege because we have to deal with the services with the task and in lot more situation you need to be the fully controller of the device that's why we need to run as an administrator because there are a lot more services Windows system doesn't allow a basic user to stop or terminate that service or task that's why we run this command prompt as an administrator privilege so here on the command prompt I'm going to show you the first command of this video is the task list so if you type task list and press enter so you will see the list in that form and it it is a copy of what you have seen in the task manager but there you can see that it is with the black background the white text totally traditional command line environment and here you can see there are a lot more services are running and all you can see here the extension is dot exe means the files are right now running in the execution mode because in your desktop you always click to the executable file that's allow that application to run and here you can see that we just open this command prompt and it is also visible here in the task list that means another task is added once you run this command prompt this command prompt process is also added to your task list and if you scroll up to the top so you will find the columns that will actually need to know before proceeding in this video that the image name is what it is the application name but there is another thing called the PID this is the ID we need to record when we want to terminate any service any task here so let me show you what I mean and how you can easily terminate and stop any service so let me open another application and make it clear to you let's say if I type notepad because I want to execute the notepad so there you go the notepad just appear on the screen and then if I run the task list and one more thing for your help that if you want to retype the command that you actually typed so you can use the up cursor key to go back to the previous command that you use or executed so just type the up cursor key and if there's a lot of commands you already use in a single command line session so you can easily do what just use the up cursor key and the down cursor key and you can easily find out the previous command that you used All right so let me issue this command test list and this time we're gonna find the notepad the part of the task and there you go the notepad is mentioned here so what it means it means that you run the notepad you execute and it is added in the task list now the thing is how to terminate and stop this notepad task with the help of command line so we're gonna type task kill space forward slash PID and need to notice that the notepad 
ID is what and if you didn't figure out the notepad PID ID so remove the command and then rerun the command task list and just make sure that you have the valid PID in case if you didn't have this valid PID it won't stop that specific task so then we're, ta we're, we're gonna type task kill space follow slash PID and there you go type the PID and which is 7100 right now press enter and there you go you get the success message that tells that you have successfully stop and terminate that task so we learned two commands task list and the task kill to easily kill and stop any task that is running on right then let's move to the service section so there's a command net start if you type this command so you will see all the working services that are running behind in the background of your desktop of your operating system so you can see there are a lot more services and so let's stop any service and for that we're going to type net stop space and start then with a comma and type windows time right now we're just doing this experiment so we are stopping windows time service and then press enter and here it is making a time and it is successfully stopped and what if you want to restart this service so you can change this keyword stop to start and then this service will restart immediately so there you can see net start windows time and it is successfully started so this is about the services how you can stop and start any service in your computer system then the thing I need to share in the last is the driver query there is another command driver query so what this command helps you if you want to know the drivers that are installed in your computer machine so you could easily type driver query and find out all the drivers that are running and stall in your operating system so that's it for this video we just covered five commands from task list task kill net start net stop and driver query and along with that the last command and really helpful is the CLS clear the screen if you want to clear the screen just simply type CLS and it will clear all the stuff all the text from your screen and the one more thing in the last for the hint I need to pro I want to provide you is why we are using command prompt because in the hacking side in the ethical hacking you will get the command line interface of your victim so where you doesn't have the GUI based environment so all controls and all tasks each and every activity if you want to perform on the victim machines you have the command line and in this video we're going to discuss and I'm going to show you the basic commands to get system details and program information and definitely those commands really gonna help you to getting the details of the system and also these commands are really helpful when it comes for the hacking let's say if you hack any system any machine and you want to see the details so where you don't get this GUI method this desktop screen where these commands are really gonna help you and moreover these commands are also helpful to do things in a quick and a fast way so let's go back to the desktop screen and here let's first launch the CMD from here so what I'm tapping CMD then right click to run as the administrator and here just click yes to the UX user account access control user access control so here in the command prompt we're going to start the command with the command that's going to tell you it will create a notepad file for you and it will analyze and detect all the softwares or the products that are installed on your machine and after execution of this command you will see all such details in a separate notepad file so let's start with the command first we're going to type WMIC and it's gonna start another menu another series and here we're going to type 
forward slash output then we're going to add column C C would be the directory you can change this directory as per your need then put column C column backslash and then you have to type the file name so I'm typing JSS then add dot text because in the command prompt you can only export the text file the notepad file so you definitely have to put this extension just right after the file name and then after typing this detail you add you need to add something more with the in the end of the command because we need to know the products and the software so we're going to type product get name comma version right so when you press enter it's gonna collect all the products name and the details of the software and then create a text file and it will go to that location which you provided here so let's press enter to execute and once you see the next prompt then just go to that directory and check the file because if you go before returning back to the prompt you won't find anything because you will find the text file but it doesn't contain any content so just wait for the next prompt and then go to go to that directory and check this text file so there you can see because this is the practice labs machine that's why it contain little programs some few products like office 16 update assistant and the windows 10 update so this command is really helpful when when you need to collect product details when you want to collect some software details within your machine now within the same command if you want to know your cpu details let's say you want to know the core the family of the processor and each and everything so you could type cpu but when when you type wmic command then it will took you to this prompt and then you can type CPU to collect the CPU details what about your processor and how many cores and clock rate and each and everything inside out you can easily find after typing the CPU command now then we need to exit from this prompt so we're going to type exit enter and we are written back to the normal command prompt and here we're going to type this part and this command also change the prompt and here you can work out on your disk you can find out the details of your disk and this this part section will dedicate it to know the details about your disk to get the information about the disk the, the number of disks that is currently installed in your machine all you can gather and know from this disk part section so the first command we're going to type is list disk so list list disk list disk so first once you type this list disk command you know this command will inform you and it will provide the output about the number of disks that are currently installed so you know here you can see that you have disk zero and status online so you have only one disk you see that is attached to your machine right now so this is actually telling you that the physical disk in your machine is one only one physical disk is attached now if you want to further go to this disk menu you would type select disk and the number zero and there you go you have a message that zero is now selected and from here you can go further forward to get the details like because we want to know the details of the disk so the command is simple detail disk press enter so here you have these information these details that tells that your single disk have three volume first is for the recovery second third is the recovery first is the basic normal volume second is the 79 gigs it's your C and you're also getting the label the file system the type 
it is mentioned that partition and the info tells once is the boot and another is the system so this command is really helping you to know about the disk because when you do these things with the graphical user interface you need to go on the computer management and that's then you select the disk management console to collect and gather these details but here with typing few keys with pressing few keys with typing few letters you're getting these details without even moving your mouse and your cursor so that's the benefit of the command line the CMD now to exit from the disk pod you're gonna type exit and it will take back you on the system 32 on the basic normal command prompt now then there is another command related to the disk is a chk dsk the check disk and as the name suggests this command helps you to check the errors and the issues happening within your system and once you execute this command it will automatically start to scan errors and the bad sectors within your disk because you know when you install and delete programs from your hard drive you see there are some spaces got corrupted because what happens when you download or install any file in your C drive and then you start to delete that area that is reserved for that particular application just written back to the free space when you're deleting that stuff but what happens when you delete that stuff and it doesn't get done correctly by means that it doesn't delete perfectly in a correct way so this area become bad sector because this area enable to change with the free space that's why these bad sectors when become in numbers it will impact your disk it will start making issues with your disk speed and other sort of things and you will see and you will find out that your disk is full without any data so at that moment if you use the chk dsk command so it will provide you all details and then you could easily repair your disk by adding some arguments against the command like chk dsk c column and then you could put any of the argument like r so it will start recovering your disk but right now we don't want to recover our disk so you can use this argument then if you want to know the mac address of your machine so we have a simple command get mac and if you type so you will get the physical address of your machine let's say there is a network environment and you're working or you have a home router and you wanna make some restriction to your machine that this router will connect to that machine right so you see in that situation you must know your physical address and if you wanna know the physical address in a glance in an instant so just go to the CMD and type get Mac because when you want to check this Mac address through the GUI method you need to open different sort of dialog boxes and you need to go on different windows and there it requires a lot of clicks but here it requires only your pressing of the keys and you will get your details then after that if you want to know the whole system details like what drivers are working what is a network situation what is your IP what 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 about your network card your RAM your other sort of stuff related to your system so the command you're going to use is the system info and here you can see the output is there the network card number are two two cards are attached at the moment one is a hyper-v network second one is a hyper-v network both are the hyper-v and there is a availability of hypervisor also you're getting some other details like where's your system which is your windows drive right and then what is your ram and how much ram is being use and the machine name and the workstation and the windows version the os details so you're getting plenty of the details that you need to know in fixing things and in dealing with the system issues so you can easily get those details by typing this system info command then in the last just similar to this command but this command is used to know about the driver details so if you want to know how many drivers you have and 
which driver you need to add because there are certain features and certain programs and mostly with the games some games require some high updated drivers and you want to know that which driver you need to install and add in your machine so you could type this driver query so it can tell you and it will provide you the output with all the details of the driver that are currently working and installed in your machine and this is too much details to verify and troubleshoot your driver related issue and if you are not getting that driver installed so definitely before fixing other issues you must install the driver and 50 and 60 percent chance that your issue would be resolved so you need to know these command and most important thing that I want to add here that if you are familiar and perfect and good at command line so you could easily work on the PowerShell also you could easily work on the server core product and also if you have any interest in hacking and if you know about the ethical hacking and you know how to get the remote session of any machine by doing some hacks so the command line skill really gonna help you because there you only find the command line the black screen with the white text so it will definitely helpful for you to go in that machine and check the details and transfer file from here to there so this command line skills really help you to easily work on any remote machine I'm going to tell you the six command through you can manage your user or remove and you can create password even you can know how many users you have in your machine so let's start with this practice labs machine so first let me tell you another command to check the users on the graphical user interface so you can acknowledge all the users and all the account settings so what's the command is l user u s r m g r dot m s c and if you type this on run or here type here to search so you will find this user console and if you want to go on that window that manager user manager so you need to go with the computer management and then you're going to select the user section but with the help of this l user msc you will directly get into this user manager console and if you click to the user so you will see the details of the user so this is what the graphical user interface to check your user right now here we're going to check those things with the CMD so what I'm doing is just typing CMD and I'm gonna execute it with the administrator privilege now here now the first command is what how to check the users that how many users you have in the same machine so the command you're gonna use is net user and press enter so here you can see there are three columns here these three columns tell you all the users you have in this physical machine not the domain user right now so here you have admin guest administrator Junaid, user 9 default account user 7 and some system accounts now if you want to make a user account if you want to create a user account so what is the command you're going to use is net spaced user then type the username the exact name on which you're gonna create the user account so let's say I'm gonna name it JSS after a space put forward slash add and the exact password you're gonna use so I'm making it the password P A double S W zero R D enter now the command is executed successfully and you can check this user account simply by the two ways first you can run net user command so it can tell you that you have this new user and right we have this JSS user right now under the administrator it tells the account is created successfully then if you want to delete your any of user accounts so you have the list on top and you can select any of them and you will type net space user forward slash and then you're gonna put the specific keyword is Dell Dell is space 
and we're going to delete this Junaid account G U N A I D enter so it is deleted successfully and let us verify now there you go the account is deleted and it is not in the list right now so the account is created successfully then we set the password along with that and then we learn how to delete an user account by using the CMD now then sometimes in Windows 8 and Windows 10 or might be in Windows 7 the administrator account disable by default and if you want to check this thing if you go to this user manager and right click on the administrator and go to the properties so often you find check on this option account is disabled so mostly the local administrator is disabled by default in Windows 10 and Windows 8 so what we does all the time if we wanna enable this account we just remove the check by using this user manager console but how we can do this action with the CMD now let's look into the next command and that is to enable administrator account that I already show you sometime this account got disabled and I showed this thing in the beginning so the command is net user space administrator space forward slash active colon yes so it can enable the administrator account and the same way if you want to disable that account you could use no and it will disable your administrator account if you don't want to change your password and just make your account simple click to login so you're going to use the command that user space the username put the double inverted commas let's say I'm going to change my administrator as a passwordless account so I'm gonna type steric and here I'm not pressing any key for the password just pressing enter and the command is successful now you can easily log in with your administrator account without the need of password so that's all about this CMD video and in this video you have seen we've covered six different commands that you, you, you could use for managing your user accounts, your password settings to delete your user account and all these commands really help you when you only have the command line mode and mostly in the server core product or while you're doing hacking and you got the remote controls of any system so you can easily manage things by using the CMD. I'm going to tell you some commands that you can use to hide your files and encrypt your file by typing some commands. And why I'm telling you these commands? Because there are other ways to hide your file by using GUI. But there are certain other ways and techniques to show those files. And if I show you in the start so you could understand what I'm talking about, but with these commands, you can easily hide your file and nobody can access your file until you type another command to show all those files. So let's start this video with the GUI introduction, then we will move to the command line. So here on this Windows 10 machine, let me show you how you can hide your file by using the GUI methods and how you can easily access those files after hiding. So this is the GSS folder and if I right click on that file and go to the properties and in the last section against the attributes you will find the read only and hidden. If you make check on the hidden so this file will hide and you no longer access this file and you no longer see this file. But if anybody knows how to see the hidden file so he or she that guy can easily go to the folder option, switch to the view tab and make check on show hidden file and then there you go the file is there to access so this thing are not helping in hiding the file in the way you want to hide so just show the file and remove the check and make the settings defaults switch to the view tab don't hide don't show this hidden files so let's move to the command prompt and just do some wonders of the keys and the command and hide those files totally and it can only be visible once you type the command again. So 
I'm going to launch the CMD and why I'm typing here on the address bar of, J of this JSS because when I'm launching the CMD from this JSS folder it gonna open with that JSS prompt so it will locate this prompt on the JSS folder so if I first run the command dir so there are three files we have now the command we're going to use to hide those files is a double t attrib attribute full form is attribute and you can search this attribute here in the Google you will further get know about the file attribute command if you type that and press enter so you will get plenty of information about this command and this keyword and what are the other arguments you could add with this attribute command so let's go back and here what I'm going to do is just type plus H H means for hidden then plus R read only R for read only means file needs to be open and it needs to be check and click only and then I'm going to add plus and S as for the system and if I press enter so you will see if you go back to the JSS all files are totally hide and if you again go to the option and go to the folder option view and make check on show hidden files you won't see those files back because you totally turn off those files for access so that's the thing I want to show in this video so if I'm making those setting defaults so what command really helps you to make those file visible again so what you only have to do is just type minus means just changing the sign you're reverting the signs and then type the same command and press enter and if you go to the JSS you, you start able to see those files as they were so this command really helps you to totally hide your file and you can only the person when you run this command you can easily make visible those files because nobody knows where you install your file where you copy your data so you're the one who knows on which directory you hide something now after that we have another command to encrypt file and if you want to further research about the encryption just go to the Google and type encryption so you will get plenty of details what is the encryption and how it works and the basic definition you got is to convert information into a code so encryption is what it converts your file your text your any information into unsensible form in a, in a form that cannot be readable so for example if you have a file in your machine and you want to transport that file in somebody's USB or some other media and you don't want to just share this file with anybody or there is a chances of recovering back of the data from that USB if you delete the file after copy that file to any machine you see so in that situation you can encrypt your file so it will become a anonymous file the file that is not useful and then you can copy that file from your machine to that pen drive or removable drive and then paste anywhere else so it's gonna help you to totally hide the data within that file so what is the command to do that cipher space forward slash e and press enter now there you can see it tells that all three files are encrypted and if we go to that folder you will see this lock on all these three files that tells that all these three files are totally encrypted and let's say if you want to decrypt all those files so you can add d just after the forward slash and you will start seeing all those files normally so this command really help you to encrypt your file and these files can only run on your machine but if somebody try to copy those files from your machine to another machine or another device so that guy that person unable to run this file because it is encrypted 
and then we have another command to upgrade this encryption system this encryption firmware that is added and the command is cipher forward slash wiki and then you press enter so it updates your EFS key from files in the folder because once you encrypt your file so there are definite some keys created because keys let's say for example if I open a notepad to explain this concept what is the key in a little I'm not going in the detail for example if I type a equals B right and then I type a a and then I ask you what is the answer so you could reply you will reply instantly that because a equals to B so the answer is BB so a equals to B is the key so if I send some data in the form of a a so the person right behind that communication unable to understand because he doesn't know about how and what is equals to a so this is the key and this is a little concept I want to clear in this command line course this is actually the key so if you want to update your keys of the files that are encrypted let's say if I encrypt my file by running this cipher forward slash e command and definitely there are some keys created to decrypt those files but in any case if I want to upgrade those keys so I run this cipher for slash rekey command so it's gonna upgrade all the keys to decrypt those files so if anybody if any sort of guy able to know the keys of your file to decrypt and when you run this rekey command it will change all those keys so the bad guy the intruder unable to decrypt your file again so that's the purpose of those commands now in the last a command which we use to know about the file detail let's say if you have a file and you only able to see the extension of that file and you don't know that this file is related to which application so you could run the command soak and let's say if I have dot text extension file so it will tell me dot text equal to text file which means it is a notepad file so this command really helps you to know about the parent application and software that is handling that file and you could run any of the extension against this so command association this AWSOC full form is association but here we need to write AWSOC so dot tags and dot jpeg whatever you want to know let's say we type jpeg so it will tell us this is the jpeg file so this command really helps you to know about the file detail with the extension if you only have the extension detail and you want to know that which file is it because these are the simple and basic extension most people knows about those extension but in contrast there are other extension that are so difficult to understand to know so you can simply type a so dot that dot that specific extension and then this command will tell you that it is related to which extension and which file form creating and exporting files through CMD and in this video we're going to show you how you create export and read files by using command line CUI so let's move to the desktop so here on the win 10 machine first we're going to launch the CMD so I'm gonna type CMD on type here to search and run as the administrator and here you can see it is prompting to the administrator but what I recommend during this practice that you should change the prompt to the desktop because when we are creating files and doing other things so you will see the output in an instant on the background so for that let me type dir to see the content the other directories we have in this administrator folder so here we have desktop so type desktop and directly jump into the desktop now here whatever the file we're going to create will just get 
located here on the desktop and you can easily see on the background so the first command I'm going to show you right now is the let's say for example that if you open any service like the task list and you want to know that what sort of tasks are being running on the background of your machine but here you can see there is a plenty of entries and there's a bunch of details and you want to export all these details in a separate text file so the command you're gonna type is task list is the same but you have to add some arguments so put this greater than sign then type the file name and the extension and press enter so it will create a file in an instant and you can see in the desktop background and there you go all the details and all the tasks are being created in a separate text file now in the same way if you want to type any message any details in the text file and want to export in your current directory so you're going to type echo e c h o echo and then you could type any of your message detail whatever you want to type is like gss or might be like type the website name jobskillshare.org and then put this greater than sign then add the file name gss1.txt press enter so it's gonna create another file that contain the exact text you type here and if I open this JSS one so you will see that exact text that you mentioned in the command line is totally exported to that specific file so this command really help you to send and type any of your details when you're in the CLI mode and you want to type any sort of message you want to make any reminder any memory any sort of file detail IP addresses whatever the stuff you want to export or you want to type in a separate text file so you can use this command to export your text within a separate text file now there is another command that allows you to type multiple lines and you could go so much in detail while typing things like the command is copy con space and mention the file name JSS2 I'm changing 1 to 2 because JSS1 and JSS is already created so this command, this command will allow you to type plenty of text and once you stop typing by pressing the control Z it won't stop you for typing the text so here you can type anything like please subscribe our channel right and after that if you want to stop this editing mode so you can type press ctrl Z so it's gonna stop and then press enter once you type ctrl Z it will show this Z here on the screen then you need to type press enter you need to press enter and then it will take out from the editor and the file is created as you want you can see here on the back on the desktop you can see the text is there and the file name is the same so you have two commands to type your message your details your text but the copy con is allow you to type plenty of lines and multiple sort of words and whatever the bunch of details you want to export within the file name so you could type here and you can easily find out that file where you create this file now after creating those file if you want to check the content of the file definitely in the command line you can see the text but if the command line command prompt is related to your Microsoft OS so here you can execute commands from the CLI and it will execute on your Microsoft operating system but as for the text if you want to see the text here on the CLI of any file any text file so you could type 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 and the file name jss2.txt and must add the extension so you will see the content the text the con the, the thing that you put in that file in the text form you can see in the CLI in your command prompt so this command help you 
to open your text file in your command prompt in a CLI. Now most of the time we want to create a new text document and we want to create new JPEG file and we did this steps, these things in so many, so many times, plenty of time to create a new text document by right clicking on the desktop and hover your mouse on new and select this new text document and it will create a totally new file for us and then we start typing and copying its stuff from the website and other sort of places. So this will create a new file by just doing some GUI based steps. But what if you want to create a new text document kind of file by using the CLI? So the simple command you need to execute is you're going to type type null null means new text because you don't want anything written on that file it would be totally new text document based file so type null space and just type the name already because here you need to rename the file but here in the CLI you are typing the name prior the creation of the file so type null greater than space gss 4txt at the extension and you can see the JSS4 is created and it's totally clean a new text file in the same way you can create other extension based file like for example if you want to create HTML new file so you could name JSS5.html you must be familiar with the extension while using this command and you can see here new file is created or you can type PNG and add six so it's going to create a png file so what you are just covering here is that by using this command you can create a new file in most of the time we in the desktop in the gui environment we create new text document and then we start copying stuff and typing other details quickly so by using the command line you can create these new files by typing these command with the, those argument and with the extension and in the last if you want to execute any text file if you want to run any text file or any other file on your OS by using the CLI because here on top I show you if you want to open any file in a CLI like I show this command type JSS 2.txt so what this command did it just opened the text it orient the text on your CLI but what if you want to open it in an in that specific application in a GUI way in a GUI so what you have to do is just type the file name and press enter so it's going to execute the file and open it in, in an application for example you have pain file so it's going to open that pain file in that for example we have gss5.html and if I press enter so it's going to open it on the Microsoft Edge or whatever the browser you're using in your machine. So this command will open the file on that specific application from which this file is originated. And if you type type space and the file name with the extension, so you will see the text on the CLI. So this is a little difference to manage your disk and if you use the GUI so it requires a lot of clicks and a lot of windows to open but in the command line you only need to type some commands and the magic is on so let's move to the Windows 10 machine now here on the Windows 10 let me show you if you use the GUI and you want to manage your disk with the graphical user interface so which menus and which console you need to open if you right click on the start window and there you will find the disk management console so if you go there so it requires a lot of clicks and a lot of options to select but if you want to do your work directly with the commands and in the quick way so you could run command prompt and as I click to the type here to the search I will get the command prompt automatically so right click on the command prompt and run as the administrator so here in this test I'm going to show you how you will 
format your USB, your pen drive, and how could you label that drive and how could you manage that drive by using the commands. So the first command we're going to execute and run here is a disk pod. And this command actually took you to the disk management environment. And here there are, after getting in the disk pod command, you have only few commands related to the disk management you could run here. You cannot run all the commands here after get in the disk pod environment. So here, if you want to check the number of disks you have, so you will run the same command that we covered previously in the task list disk. So it will show you the number of disks you have and the disk zero is a 20 gigs. That's our primary disk that contain the operating system. And the disk one is what is the removable drive. It is the USB. And let me show you in the GUI, if you click to the file explorer and click to this PC, this is the USB that I attach for this specific video to show you how to format and label that disk. Now, after typing this command, you have another command to select the specific disk. And the command is select disk one, and it depends on the number of the disk you want to select. So you, you could write that same number here. So I want to select the disk one. And now here, the, the disk one is selected. Now we're going to run a command clean to just do a quick check over that disk. And after cleaning that disk, once we get this successful message from the command line that the disk is clean, then we're going to create a primary partition of that disk. And for that, we're going to run the command create primary partition. Enter. So this is the command range we have. And as you can see that I misplaced the name, the exact key, like create partition primary is the exact command and I run create primary partition. So it will tell us that you need to put that word, that word, that specific command word before that one. So we need to add create partition primary, press enter. And there you go, you get the message that the primary partition is successfully created. Now we're going to select the partition one. So the command is select partition one. So after creating the partition, we just in the selection of that specific partition. And now we're going to do other stuff. And the stuff is to form it. And this is the main and the main part of this video that how you could format your partition, your removable drive, your pen drive with the command line. So the command is format fs file system equal ntfs and then space add the keyword quick. So it will do this whole part quickly, but like take a little time. But after all, in compared to the normal format, it does this work quickly as compared. Now there you go, it is 100% complete and formatted. Now it's time to active this specific drive and it is now marked as active and then we're going to assign that partition and there you go it is attached and now in a working position but here you can see it's still it, this drive don't have any name so after assigning we need to exit from the disk part by just simply typing exit and if we go to the GUI we're going to find that the we have f drive the usb but it doesn't contain the label so to name it to make a label on that drive we just simply type label and the drive letter f now there's a mode open for you and you can type any of the names so i'm going to name it jss and then press enter so the label is changed to jss and you could verify here too that the name is changed to JSS from the simple F drive. So by the help of these commands, you can format your pen drive. You can simply select, you can change the label, you can clean your disk, and it is 
actually the disk management commands all now the question is if you want to make your usb your pen drive with a bootable usb for windows operating system so the process is simple just follow all the same commands as i did and then mount the iso on your computer on your any storage and then copy all the content of that iso in the same usb in the same pen drive and it will become a portable usb for windows installation we have the command tree shutdown history so we will cover those commands that can already help you to check the previous command you executed and the command related to check the whole directory of any drive of any folder so without even wasting time let's quickly move to the windows 10 machine here let me run the cmd with the administrator privilege so it is simple as you know right click on the cmd and run as admin now there on the cmd the first command we're, we're going to execute here is a tree so let's say for example if you want to check the folder the directories and the subdirectory because you know in any of your folder you also create some other folders and even with the file when you install any program any application into your machine it also created folders then the subfolders and that that subfolders contains your executable files so let's say if i type dir under this administrator folder you could see these folder but definitely there are some other subfolders that are in that folder so let's say for example if you want to check any directory or any executable file and you are guessing that this might be here in that sub in that main folder and you're not sure about the subfolder or the exact location of that file so the command tree will help you to know this and you just only type tree and press enter so there you can see it is providing you the subfolder detail within this administrator folder let's say you wanna know about the whole directories having in your program files or in your windows so which command you're going to use tree so what it will does it will collect every file every subfolder and display to you in a form of tree that in which folder there's a subfolder and then other folders and then it will reach it will show you that which executable file and which file is located and at which subfolder and which is originated with that specific folder and you can easily figure out by using this tree command and as you can see here that it cover any every folder of your c drive and provide us the file locations and all the structure you could say and this is the tree what we call so in this way you could easily use this command to know about the directories you have in your any folder or in any drive now after that we have another command and the command is simple date if you want to change the date of your system if you feeling that the date is changed and it's not correct so you can change and if the days days dates it's already correct and you don't want to change so simply copy that provided date under this new provided section so it will set this new date as the current date and in this way we have a similar command time so if you feel that the time is not correct on your system so you could change otherwise if the time is right and really on your standard time base so you could go with that so the time is changing that way because most of the time when you're using your browsers and if the date and time is not correct they start providing error and they stop working and the error is shown like that the police must change your time and set according to your standard time then this browser or internet will work so in such situation you got stuck and you get in that mess where to open the time settings and you could open control panel and it definitely to, it will take time to reach on that specific window or GUI option 
but here in the CMD you have basic commands date and time and in this way you could easily set the time and just update your date and time settings so then after we have another command to check the history of previously executed command let's say you run a lot of commands and somehow you missed any command or you want to see the CMD that which command I used before that command and that sort of things and you want to be sure about all the commands that you executed or run so there's a command task key forward slash history press enter so it can list for you all the command you want to see you want to write down or you want to notice that all such commands that you executed will be displayed in a form of list and you could easily watch and if you're creating any document you're preparing any sort of file any history of the commands so you can prepare from that command so it will help you to track your history of the commands that you executed on your CMD after that we have another command and this is quite different and typical because this command will shut down this machine so it is related to turn off and power off the system but there is some argument that you can add that make it more logical and more helpful so the command is shut down and if you press shut down dash s so th it, this definitely means that you want to shut down your machine but there is another argument you could add here is dash t so if you add this dash t it will allow you to add seconds that after what seconds you want to shut down your machine so you can add if you want if you doesn't want to add any seconds you just want a quick shutdown and in, inst in an instant so you can type double zero so it will take no time to shut down your machine but if you have planned something or you're leaving for something and the required timing for that installation let's say for example you're deploying a software and it is providing the estimated time for that deployment it is about 10 or 20 minutes and you know how much seconds in the 10 and 20 minutes so then you can easily add some more time considering that estimated time and provide that seconds here in the form of seconds second unit then what will happen after that time reach the machine will go automatically shut down and that's the best way to shut down your machine when you off from your desk when you are not on your desk and you feel that I won't come on that specific time so once this whole deployment whole process is done my machine is supposed to be shut down so in such cases you can use this command and add the timing to automatically shut down your machine so I'm not going to do that because you know this will shut down my machine and in the same way you if you add dash r so it will restart your machine in the same way if you add time t for time and provide some seconds for restart so it will do the same but it won't shut down your machine it will restart your machine so video i'm going to cover some command that help you to check scheduled tasks as well as your shared files and most of the time you share any folder and just you want to check that how many user at the real time using that file have accessed the file so we have some commands through you can easily monitor the status that how many user at the real time are accessing that specific file so let's move to the windows environment now here let's run the cmd with the administrator privilege as you know so here on the command prompt the first command we're going to show here is check NTFS. So what's new in it? Most of the time you use the command chkdsk to check this and it is very helpful and used so many times and most of the IT personnel are known to that command. But there is another command where you're just changing this DSK to NTFS so actually this command checks this file system the ntfs file system so the command is chk ntfs and enter so here 
the thing you need to add after this command because in the chkdsk you mostly provide the drive letter so in the same way you have to provide the drive letter and this time it would be c for the testing purpose and here you can see chk ntfs space c colon so it is telling that this ntfs file system is correct and it's not dirty so the dirty means that it is working correctly and there is no any sort of issue and error regarding this file system on the C. So how you can see that here, how this output really helping you to totally judge the system file and also you are monitoring and getting output about the status of the disk. Now, after that we have another command and this command really helps you to open the control panel so if you want to open your control panel from the command line so you should type control and press enter so what it will do it will open the control panel on your GUI so most of the time if you are using command line and you have to do something in a quick way and you want to launch your control panel so just type control in the command line and it will display the control panel in an instant and most of the time there are a lot of tools we have in the windows in the GUI environment in the control panel so we have to access the control panel to fix those things even to show to view such sort of options so for that purpose you can simply type control in the command line and it will open the control panel now the command is schedule task and this command does what it helps you to see and check and monitor all the tasks that had been scheduled in your Windows operating system. And here you can see there are plenty of tasks here that are already scheduled in your Windows environment. And if you want to see those tasks in your GUI, so you have to go to the computer management. And here, if you click to the task scheduler, so it's going to display all the tasks here but if you want to see all the tasks in the command line so you should type the command schedule task and what if you want to create a separate file where you want to export all the scheduled tasks so you would write schedule task greater than sign and then name anything to that file and press enter so it will export all the tasks to to that directory directory so you can access that file and you will get all the list of the scheduled tasks in a separate file so that's the best thing it is offering in the command line that you can easily export the list of all the scheduled tasks in a separate file we have another command ver and as the name suggests as the short form suggests the version command and it will tell you that which Microsoft version is currently running in your machine so you can easily in an instant find out that which version is installed and deployed in your Windows in your currently in your machine so you, you should type VER to find out that specific version of your operating system now the last command of this video is open files when you run this command so this command will tell you the current sharing let's say for example you created a folder and shared within your local network right and you want to see that how many users are currently using that file right how many persons right now are accessing to that directory so for that you can simply type open files and it will provide you the data and the user which are the number of user who are using that file currently in that output some practical examples of IP config command with other keywords that are mostly used as an IT help desk personal or with the IT support person so we're going to show you all such examples in the command and the usage of IP config so let's start the video but before that please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss any update now here I have this Windows 10 machine and let's open the command prompt that I already 
open for this video now here let's say for example that you want to know about your network details and NetWest stuff let's say the IP address right or you are fixing any trouble that the system is facing like it is not getting internet or there's no connectivity and in the first hand on the troubleshooting side you must know the network configuration whether the configuration is correct whether the IP address is provided or being set so all these network information you need to know and in most cases there might be some issue with the default gateway that's why the machine is not getting the internet the packet the the machine let's say this is specific machine enabled to reach to the server like the Google server it is enable to do browsing and this is definitely happens when the machine doesn't have the default gateway but how could you know that this machine having any correct IP address or there might be some sort of default gateway is not available and there are some issues happen like in the organization where the computer are connected with the server sometimes the same IP is being leased to the same computer to the one computer and then when this computer just turn off and another computer turn on so it leases that IP to this new computer so in that case when this previous computer turn on there must be and there is a kind of IP conflict happen so how could you know those information how could you gather and collect this input and then to process and just apply some of your tools some of your techniques to troubleshoot this issue so all sort of basic details and investigation you could start with the IP config command so the best point you could remember for practical example of IP config that it is the initial and the first tool you should apply to investigate your network details and from this point you can even start your investigation so let's start with some practical work and these are all the practical examples you could follow and apply in a different way with the environment or with the trouble so right now if I don't use IP config let's say and if I want to know the network details so what should I have to do is just right click on the network and internet settings then open this window where it contain the network details and the adapter detail and definitely it takes a lot of clicks and a lot of windows to open to reach to your exact location from you can collect information and you need to just go there to get the basic details after getting this input then you can realize that what should you need to apply here to troubleshoot this issue so here what what I did is just click to the change adapter settings and go to the adapter or might be I can click to the adapter directly and it will show me this window that contain the adapters and the receiving and the send packets so if I click to the detail so I can easily get the details of the network parameters like the IP address, the subnet, the DHCP server, right? The DNS server and most of the important details I could find here like the physical address. So here you can see that it takes a lot of steps and a lot of clicks and you need to open certain windows and certain locations to get the details. But here you can see you cannot transport this all details into a notepad file all you need to do is to just close this one or you can take a screenshot but if you are doing some kind of documentation and you want to transport and you want to create a separate file so you, if you want to export the all details that you collect on any system so the command line is the best to do this, to do so so let me close these windows and show you 
the ipconfig command and its uses. So here's the command prompt and if I type ipconfig here and press enter, so immediately you will, in the first look, you can easily realize that how many adapters you have in your system. So sometimes adapter were hide it in your network and sharing center. Let's say if I open it again for you to just make sure that how this IP config command is useful to collect information about your adapters, about your network parameters. So if I click here and open the adapter settings, change the adapter option, sometimes the adapter will hide and you enable to see that how many adopters are working and are attached to this same machine. But by using this IP config command, it will list down all the adopters that are currently working. So it will not just hide all those adopters that might be hidden due to any sort of settings or windows general behavior in the response. Somehow some files got hidden in the operating system but but the best thing in the CMD that whenever the file is not available in the GUI in the graphical user interface you can still see that file access that file and it must be visible because you're using the CMD but there are certain commands you could use to hide those files now here in the first look you are getting the information about the number of adapters you have so right now we have this single one, Ethernet adapter, Ethernet zero. So Ethernet zero is the adapter name. And the second thing you are getting is your IP address, your subnet and the default gateway. So it is providing you little detail, but it is useful somehow. And from this IP config command without any keyword and argument, you can easily assess that this machine have the IP address it have the default gateway so that's the best part of this command but in contrast you enable to find out the DHCP setting the DHCP server the DNS server your physical address the adapter MAC address so this command actually telling you the network detail but not in brief it is just the pieces of information of your network so if you want to collect the whole detail and like if you want to know the DNS address, the DHCP server address, whether the DHCP is working or not because this command is not itself capable of providing the DHCP server detail like whether the DHCP server is working or not or the IP is set manually or dynamically like automatically. So for that you need to run another command IP config space forward slash all and once you press enter so definitely you have the single adapter working here and by pressing by pressing these keys and executing this command in a, in a glance you will see this output and if you start from top to bottom so first you will see the host name the machine name and here you can see that the details are more explored and in a huge way like you're getting a bunch of details unlike with this with this just IP config command so on the top you have the host name so with this command you could easily know the host name and then the description that contains the adapter name and the physical address your MAC address and this is different with each adapter so currently you need to just make sure that you are on the correct adapter that is providing you the internet connection so you will get the adapter detail once you scroll down to the each adapter so currently there is one that's why we are getting this output related to that one specific adapter then another line that contain the DHCP enabled that is yes so it is straightforward and quickly telling you that your DHCP is enabled and this machine receive the IP with the DHCP server then you have the IPv6 addressing detail then the IPv4 and the subnet mask 
And the interesting part is it is telling about the lease time and also the lease expires in the default gateway. And also it is telling about the DHCP server and the DNS server too. So all you have, all the details you have, all are required and helpful to assess and start your investigation from this point. Let's say your user complains that the user, I'm, my machine is not getting IP address. So what should you have to do is just run this IP config command and first check whether this machine getting an IP address. And let's say if you type IP, IP config and you didn't get any IP address, let's say you get answer, you get the output is 169 and that's something. It means that this machine didn't get any IP address. So that could be the best way to determine whether this machine is getting IP from the DHCP. But in contrast, if we go to the GUI and if we want to know that whether this machine is getting IP address from the DHCP, so you have to do so many steps and you have to open so many dialog boxes to know whether this machine is getting IP address automatically. So if you open this dialog box and in this window, you can see the check is made on obtain an IP address automatically. So here it is telling that the DHCP is working, but here in the command line, there's a straightforward answer for you that the DHCP is working. So this is the best part of the IP config forward slash all command that it provide you a direct answer. Then the least thing and the DHCP server also, you can locate this DHCP server from here and find out that which DHCP server is working. And also you're getting the DNS server detail. And in next video, I will tell you about how to find out the FQDN of the DNS server. This is the topic of another video. So I'm not starting this topic right now. So how this IP config space forward slash all command is helping in troubleshooting issues that you are getting enough detail in the beginning to investigate the problem that whether the problem is with the machine or with the other part of network that might be the router or switch so after getting this basic detail you can analyze and you can assure yourself and you can done that this machine is perfect everything is configured correctly so there might be some issue with the cable right or with the other network devices like the switch or like the router so you can easily confirm yourself at this point by getting this output like if the DHCP is enabled if the IP address is correct if the DNS server if the DHCP server the default gateway all are correct all are the one that you provide or you set in your DHCP server, then you could easily sh assure yourself that everything is working good here. So definitely there must be some issue with the other network devices or with the cable. Nonetheless, I'm going to add some keywords with the IP config to show you other options and other sort of function of this command. Let's say if you want to renew the IP or if the user calls you and asks that I'm getting this DHCP conflict issue in my machine. So if you want to fix this issue remotely, so you can take the remote or you can tell the user that go to the CMD and type IP config space forward slash renew. So what this command does, it just refresh the IP or just made another query to the DHCP server that just refresh my IP. So if the IP is in conflict on the DHCP server, that in the same time IP goes to the two machine and if, if there is a conflict, so it will resolve and it will totally refresh the IP for you. So right now there's no conflict, so it returned the same IP back to this machine. Then another command and that you use and somehow you may require 
that command to execute is a display DNS. So once you execute this command, it will tell you all the DNS that are used or might be your machine is make contact with those DNS or if the machine, let's say for example, you want to know that this client machine is doing what? Let's say you get a complaint or you just saw some sort of threats and malware and some sort of you found some sort of downloading, right? You got some report about that machine that this machine is doing some malicious activities and you want to know that on which web server this machine is connecting or which other web server are in contact with that specific node and specific client so you could run this IP config space forward slash display DNS so it will tell you all the DNS details in the past it just contain the history of the DNS that were in contact and that provided the exact web server location where this client machine had connection so in this way you can judge and you can specify that definitely this machine is doing some malicious activities so this command is really helpful to find out the DNS connection and if somehow your client is unable to contact with the web server with your DNS server let's say your client is unable to get the details from the DNS server right or if the client is unable to let's say if he opens some file with the administrator privilege and he's typing his password his account name but didn't getting any response from there and there's sort of error like the DNS issues or other sort of for example if the client is trying to ping or share file with another web server another server within the network and there is no connectivity with that location so there's a command flush DNS and if you type this command so it will do what it will flush the DNS cache and just refresh the whole DNS activity and definitely this DNS related issues would be resolved so this you know uh, just don't take like this uh, like the simplicity of this tool uh, we use this even in the CCI labs this is uh, the basic tools but very important to consider to be a very important tool in our networking environment and as a network administrator uh, personally i have been using ping tool all the time all day long i'm using ping so uh, let's talk about a little bit about the ping tool then we will hit the lab it comes under the protocol called icmp uh, because we are going to uh, check the reachability of this ICMP protocol. The ping is a command prompt utility used to test the ability of the source computer to reach the destination. So let's suppose we have two computers connected with each other with any mode. I have no idea whether it's switch, route, or whatever. And they have some kind of IP addresses. I want to see whether this computer, this one is alive or not. This computer is there on my network or not. This could be the PC. This could be my server. This could be even my access point. Because all devices have some kind of identification, which is IP. So with the help of ping tool, I'm just going to hit this device with a ping tool. And this device is going to give me a reply back saying that I'm alive. So this is how instead of going to that computer, that is maybe some far away in a floor two and you are in a floor one. Instead of I will go into the computer and I will see everything is working fine in that computer. Uh, this computer is on or not. 
I just try to ping that computers directly from my floor one. And if I receive the reachability, it means that computer is alive. It has some options available. We will discuss a lot in detail in this uh, uh, demo. And we will talk when we'll hit these options. Uh, let's go to the uh, demo and then we will talk about these error messages then this will make sense so i hope everybody is familiar with the, the command prompt what is it yes it is it is pre-installed in uh, your uh, windows machines and even in the linux as well um, in the linux we sometimes call it shell or con the console uh, and in windows environment we call it a command prompt if you type on your search bar and type a command prompt or just type CMD, you will find this black console kind of application. Just click on that. Okay, so um, first of all, I give you the scenario. I have uh, my device, which is connected on IP 192.168.100. Then for this demo, I'm using my access point or the modem, which is connected at 192.168.100.1. So let's try pinging my access point, first of all. So I want to see end-to-end -end reachability. Type ping, then the IP address of the device which is in question, which is my access point. So type 192.168.100.1, which is the address of my access point and click. As you can see, we it will generate uh, one, two, three, four replies, basically saying your access point is alive and it is giving me reply. So I have reachability end to end with the access point. In the same fashion, if you have 100 devices attached in your lo local area network and you want to see the reachability, you can just do pinging all these devices one by one. One, two, three, four, to check the connectivity. Then, if I want to go a lot in detail, what else ping can do? just type ping then hyphen or minus with a question mark and hit enter it is going to show me another option what else i can do with this ping command as it is mentioned minus t let's see what it does so i am not going to go all, a lot in detail about these all everything what is it is doing but just the important options that we most often use in our working environment like minus t if i ping the same my access point device with the help of option minus t and type 192.168.100.1 and hit enter before my reply stopped at the fourth point but now as you can see it is on and on and on it is just keep pinging that device why we need this minus t option because we want to keep because this is giving me a reply but sometimes it happens some device is not not giving me reply if it is not giving a reply it will be like this let's suppose we have 55 now you can see the reply from this uh, device saying destination host unreachable so it means this is unreachable now, with the help of minus T, I kept my uh, this ping uh, on continue. So, you know, so I just kept continue my ping. So why? Because then I will go to the another device, which is not giving me reply. I will try to find the solution. And as soon as I will start to see the replies coming from that device, it means it is, uh, uh, there is end-to-end uh, -end connectivity. So that's why we keep minus the options that will just keep pinging that device all the time.
then we have some another option type minus and question mark then we have minus a resolve address to post name first of all i try to ping my own computer which is on 192168100.3 So it is giving me giving me a very simple reply, and I I'm totally blind at this time. I have no idea this reply is coming from which device. What is the name of device? Because we know these devices by name. So minus a option basically going to give me the information about the PC as well. So the name of my computer is Cyber PC. So just by looking at this uh, name i will know that okay this computer this belongs to this so you can have like in a real production environment let's suppose you have four or five servers uh, in your uh, it closet and then you can ping those devices but you have no idea what that server is for let's suppose one server is running uh, your hotel management application another server is running uh, SQL server, server, another one is running, let's suppose, uh, uh, your finance application. So with, because you have given some kind of name to this, I'm sure. Okay, let's go uh, some another options. Yes. Um, then what else? Uh, this is the number of uh, pings we can send. For example, uh, I want to send just one ping, just for some purpose. Oh, sorry. Uh, you have to mention how many pings you want to send after minus n. As you can see, it just send one ping. Okay. So there could be some reason, valid reason, uh, uh, the purpose that we want to send only one ping. So this thing can. So come on, can we use can we use this uh, specific one for less a cabling issue? I know that. Sometimes there's a cable issue and we, we want to run the command for a long time to see if the cable is fully working. Is this the command that you would prefer as a network engineer to use or the other ones? Exactly. This uh, ping minus N, um, you know, there is no any specific reason using minus N. But the one that is most being used is minus T. It will keep pinging. And we can see, like, you know, if I show the, my internet connectivity right now, if I try to ping minus T with the help of 4.2.2.2, so basically it kept on pinging and I can correlate with my TTL and times. If there is any kind of delay, I can see here. Can, can you explain to us or for Haifa and Christelle, how, how does how do you de determine these ms what does this gives us, us any information if okay. it says ms this much or ttl this much yeah, how yeah. would you so i will not touch this ttl part because we are going to cover next okay so we will be specific to this time these are the time slots basically is trying trying to hit this device in this millisecond it means my first packet went in 147 millisecond, it hit that server and returned back. Again, 147, 147. It means my internet connectivity is so stable. But as you can realize here, here something happened. It hit 140, 58 millisecond. It means some kind of application which is running in my background. Maybe it is taking some kind of data so this is one a very good method you know to identify your internet connectivity as well sometime you will find that reply is coming then there is no reply request timeout reply again coming then again request timeout reply is coming again request timeout so this is a very pure identification that there is going something happening in your, uh, uh, with the ex either access point or with the cabling or with the network interface card. So this kind of troubleshooting you can do with the help of 
which is paying minus t comma t. Clear? Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. Then we have some another options. These I'm not gonna tell, these are so advanced. Uh, uh, then this is also very informative, which is saying source address to use. Okay, uh, I think I have removed that. So we have this, uh, a simple topology where we have a server and we have a host machine and I'm trying to send a ping. But you have multiple interface cards connected to this host machine. Like in my case, I have one wireless LAN. I have one for LAN. I have one for VMware one for virtual machine for virtual machine two. So what if I want to ping this server, not using my default LAN interface card, but from my wireless LAN, then this thing will help us, minus S, which is basically telling me from which source you are gonna ping. So let's do this example here live. Uh, let's suppose if I go to IP config slash all to see all of my IPs. And let's pick uh, the IP, let's this one, 192.168.42.1. And if I want to ping, I will type minus S with uh, this uh, as a source, which is, uh, this one and I will try to ping my access point. So this is going to be my source and this is going to be my destination. But if you notice earlier I was trying to ping uh, from the same subnet from my LAN device basically the LAN network interface card. But this time I'm trying to uh, sourcing from the v, VM machine. But there is kind of some, uh, let's say, some uh, requirement that I want my VM where to access my access point. So you can use minus S option with the help of this um, VM net IP address to ping this uh, access point. So let's try pinging, does it work or not? As you can see, transmit failed because uh, um, my router does not have any information about this one. But if I will do the same thing with the same subnet, oh, sorry. And, and the IP of my device is 100.3. This time I try to ping, you can see the reply is coming because my whole uh, access point has information about this subnet. So I am changing the source before we had VMware. And you can clearly see uh, the difference between these two IPs. So I am sourcing from different location basically. If I try to go some other option, and I'm not gonna go, uh, do the demo for this one. If you have uh, IPv4, this is by default, we will type minus four. And in case of IP6, what if I want to ping IPv6 addresses? You can use like my ping minus six. And then this uh, very long IPv6 address, something like this. And then you can ping this address. Okay, so the demo for your ping section ends here. If you have any question, you may ask.
Hello? No, we're good. Okay. I'm not getting any replies, so that's why I'm concerned. That everyone is there or no? No, no, we're Or I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. When you don't hear a reply like that, you can move on then. Okay, that's fine. Well, sometimes it happens that there is internet connect, uh, connection issues. Maybe uh, I'm connected, but you are not. So that's why, you know, I just want some echo from you. Okay, so the ping has, uh, we have done. Okay, so. Uh, and again, this, the, I think for you guys, you, you should, after this, you know, try to ping your own home network, try to understand because you have such a good example right there. You have so many devices, you have a router at your home because you're going to have to start with extreme basics like that to understand your, even your home network, that level of ping it, ping JSS website, try to ping it for a long time, try to understand what's like, you know, the time, things like that. And after this, you should be doing your own research. They do a lot on ping side because it's great to get started like this, but again, you're always gonna be as a network engineer, you're gonna be using the same concept, even in routing, even in switching, you have to do ping uh, other devices for, for you to do your work. You will have to do that from their devices as well. But that's where I think you guys should start with extreme basics, move up to your home network. And then after that, when you start the packet tracers and all that kind of stuff and your labs, you should be then using, uh, you know, same, same method, same, concepts in those type of devices as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we come across some another uh, error messages you need to understand. One is destination host unreachable versus request timed out. So most often you come across these errors. So, so you must have an idea what what is the different difference between these two. Host unreachable, basically, when we are on the same network, let's suppose in my case, we are running 192.168.100.x. X means whatever the host identification number you can do for one, two, three, all the way up to 254, you can assign. So if I'm trying to ping, uh, some IP within this subnet, I'm going to receive host unreachable. It means we are on the same subnet, but maybe this computer is maybe dead, uh, maybe shut down, or maybe there's cable issue, network interface card issue. Okay, so you are going to receive unreachable. Request timeout when you are not on the same subnet. And this subnet does not exist in this domain. These kind of errors you're gonna receive. And we will discuss, you know, you don't need to worry about this. We will go a lot in detail when we'll, in a router and switches, we will be pinging. You will see several kind of errors there. And these, just I'm giving you, I just uh, fly by overview, the difference between these two. Then this packet loss, uh, it gives, the, gives you the information how many packets have been lost. Like in this case, you can see two packets lost. It means there is kind of some issue in your LAN environment. If you are pinging LAN environment, if you are pinging your device that is in the, your same LAN environment, then I'm sure this is a problem with your cable either with a cable, with your network interface card, or there's some kind of loops happening in your local area network. Similarly, if you are trying to ping uh, the Google that is not in your domain, if you receive this kind of errors, like as I said earlier, reply is coming, then there is request timeout. Then reply is coming, request timeout. It means you have some kind of serious internet connectivity is going on in your uh, uh, your uh, working environment. 
The other tool we're going to use is the trace tracer tool, also known as trace route tool. And what it does, trace route is a network diagnostic tool used to track in a real time the pathway taken by the packet on an IP network from source all the way to the destination. In a very plain English, what does it mean? We have host A here and some host B is somewhere for location. We have multiple routers in between and we will use this tracer tool to find out how far away this device is from us. So in this case, it's going to give me reply three. One, two, and three, and then it is going to hit the destination. So the tool is very simple, it is, but it is very useful. Why? Let's suppose your, this router is down. First, you will do ping. Ping will tell that host is unreachable. Then your second tool, which is tracer, is going to be very handy. When you will apply tracer, it will hit this one. It will hit this interface because this is still working. Only I'm talking about this interface is down. So immediately the reply will come from, or will say the two. It means after reaching the second uh, device, we cannot go beyond. So it means it is a clear indication that we have somewhere the problem lies somewhere inside in this router and in this boundary. So let's do the, uh, the demo for the tracer. So let's go to the, again, command prompt. I hope it is visible, the command prompt, yeah? Yep. yep. Okay, so you will type T-R-A-C-E-R-T -E -E tracer and the desired address. Let's suppose uh, we want to trace out how many, uh, how far job skill share server is from us. That's my basement right there. There you go. <laughs> But this is very simple. It's going to take so long. So I will go to some another option. So here you can see this is uh, 192.16.100.1, which is my gateway. Yes, my gateway. Or in simple term, is my access point, the router. Then this router is connected somehow with the ISP, maybe the router. And this is going to the interface of this router. Then this router is connected with some another router on this interface. And this is going to be the uh, IP address for that. So it went how far? three hops, one, two, and three. Now in a real world example, you would use something like this and come around, you can correct me. If you have a big building with four floors, four floors each have its separate switches. And let's say on the bottom floor, something happened and machines are not able to go outside and you would use some type of command like this, like tracer, which yeah. then you can you can find out which switch on that floor is then having an issue, right? Yeah, uh, or exactly. a router. Uh, yeah, I just want, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dennis, you, you can continue, you can continue. Yeah, and another example that I can give you guys that sometimes companies are using a, you know, two connections for companies because you don't want to rely on one connection. So if one com one goes down and let's say one is a uh, fast connection and other one's a backup and a slow connection, sometimes a lot of people complain, oh, uh, we are, we can't use internet, uh, it's so slow. 
And this way you could use a tracer to find out if your connections are actually going to the slow router or the fast exactly. one. Yeah. You could find that because of these commands. Just keep this in mind. There are different scenarios you can use this uh, command like that, okay? Yeah, that is very great example. Thank you, Danish. Another thing I want to clarify here, uh, just Danish mentioned the switches. Sometimes, uh, you know, the switches, they are the dumb devices, they don't have IPs. Okay. So sometimes the tracer will not work for these switches. If we have, let's say, we have multiple switches connected, like a daisy chain fashion, and I will run tracer command from this machine to this destination. It is gonna tell me you are one hop away because it will not consider these switches as a routers because they don't have any kind of IP connectivity and it will not consider these like the bumps in the wire. If we have the routers here, then yes, this is three hops away. But these days switches are intelligent enough, you can have switch plus the router inside that device. It is works as a switch as well as a router. Then in that case, if we have these things, then it will show the three hops. I hope you get it. Yep, thank you. That was a good example because some people may not know that, yeah, you can, have, when, you, when you when people ask you about that, oh, didn't I mm -hmm. hear that there are switches on layer three? That's what he's talking about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. The new one comes with that capabilities. It's not that the whole switch is, like a router, it's just the capability is being added to it. Yes, right. Okay, then we can go in detail about tracer and the same method way we did with the ping, tracer minus, minus and the question mark, and you will see there is not much going on in the tracer as opposed to the ping. So we will be using only this, I think. Yeah, that's it. And then we can use the source address the same way that we uh, did for a uh, um in the ping but this will go for the ipv6 only as you can see so uh i did tracer and i did www.jobskillshare.org and uh sorry there's a typo in there uh tracer then jobskillshare.org yeah as you can see, it is taking so long here. Why? Because it is trying to uh, resolve the DNS, the name of that, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, name of this host machine. So every time it hit this device, it's trying to resolve the name. This we don't, do not want. So what is the solution for that? You want to process tracer uh, very fast with the help of minus D. And it is clearly mentioning here, do not resolve address to host. So the same thing we're gonna um, uh, do with the help of minus D command and you will see the difference. You can type minus D option here. And now, as you can see, this is much more quicker than before. Now we can clearly see how far jobs can share all this from us. Another thing very important here, did you notice these statics? Whenever you come across this static, it doesn't mean that this device is not responding. This device is responding, but basically there is kind of firewall device is installed that is denying these ICM pipings uh, to hit this uh, host machine. So this is for the security mechanism. So since, you know, this uh, job skills here, I think this is located in somewhere in United States and it is far, far, far away from us in the Pakistan. As you can see, there is a lot of routers. Basically, these all routers, these things. Can we say that now it, it took some type of path or a best path or is that a correct term to use? Come exactly. On? You can use, uh, for example, uh, you can... Uh, uh, if job skill share has multiple servers, okay, then it is not going to use always the same path. Maybe it will use some different path. It find it better than the other one. 
So from here, you can also um, see that sometime you are hitting less routers than before. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm eating. Yes. Okay. So I just uh, I press Control plus C uh, to disconnect this one because it is taking so long. So this is preset command, and as I said, this is very helpful tool uh, when you have multiple uh, when you have multiple devices in between, like routers. And we have no idea which device, for example, this one is uh, disconnected or shut down. Uh, then we have reachability all the way up till this. If, if I'm trying to think from this. So this is how I'm going to uh, imagine uh, that uh, we have the problem somewhere in this router. So that is where Tracer tool is being used. And this is very helpful in your day-to-day -day, uh, working net stat tool. Uh, you can consider this is like the monitoring tool, but in a low end, like in our computers, we can run net stat tool. And basically what it is, the net stat is a command utility, utility used to display current network connections and the port activity on your computer. What does it mean? It means, uh, whatever the connectivity or the connections is going through from, from my computer or coming to my computer, I can see what ports it is connected with, uh, whether I'm using Chrome, uh, what other applications like we have Discord, we have Skype, what kind of connections are connected on my computers right now. We can take a look from using NetStack too. So let's go into the demo let's clear this screen if i will do simply next step without any option as you can see it is saying active connections what protocol my connection is using tcp what is the local address of my system 192.168.100.3 and it is showing me the port address, which is, I told you, this is the random port. And it is not well-known port. It is, the state is established and is it, it is connected with a foreign address, which is, which is located somewhere far from my computer. Uh, and this is the IP, which is going to be the public IP. And this is connected with a triple A3. Um, um, maybe this is the, like the well-known port, but it is very slow. Again, the problem is it is trying to resolve the host or the DNS information. So what is the remedy? The same way we can go next step minus question mark. And then we can come here, display the address, sorry. Displays addresses and port number in numerical form. Let's try again with that minus n and hit enter. As you can see, very quickly processed, which were it was going to take time here. So we can see the same information. Uh, the connection is established. We have multiple local connections. Uh, from the different ports going to the well-known ports, like 443 is a well-known port. 80 is a well-known port. This is secure, non-secure. 443 is secure and 80 is non-secure. Now I want to go one step further and I want to convert these into the names. I don't want, I don't know. For example, I'm very, uh, at a very basic level. I have no idea what 443 stand for. So further you can dig deep and check that stat and type minus question to see which options will enable that for us. Uh, then we have fully qualified DNA, uh, domain names as well. Uh, let's try this minus B. 
displays the executable involved in creating each connection listening port. Let's try this one. Minus B. And this minus B option basically it is giving me information not only uh, what kind of protocol I'm using, but also what kind of application I'm using. So you can imagine yeah, how this, Nikki... this could be, yeah, this could be a great way to find out if somebody is complaining about, you know, hey, I, I'm having a lot of issues. My computer is very slow or my computer is being like, you know, doing weird stuff, but they can't see it, right? This could be a great way to actually run this command and find out if there's a background application that's doing a lot of stuff from exactly. the command line. Exactly. And somebody raised this question as well earlier that uh, um, if I disable or uh, one port out. So as you can see clearly here is Zoom XZ. Zoom, what kind of protocols, uh, the port number it is running as a source and it is using the well-known port HTTPS. So it means Zoom is using a very secure connection. Sorry if uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but <clears throat> what's the difference between established is, is I think, established direct, is but close weight and time weight? Okay, so established is basically this is I'm connected with. Okay, this connection is currently established. And these are previous connections which is waiting to close. And similarly, time wait is it has already expired. Like it's wait. I don't like when you say establish, you're actively in that session. Okay. Yes. So no, yeah, no, I, I get up. that one. Mm -hmm. I just I don't get time wait. Like it's expired. Yes, it is expired. This is like you can say consider it like uh, the session that uh, a long ago it happened. Now it is waiting to time out in short. Okay. Yeah, so your computer, your computer is going to keep some kind of, you know, connection to close down. It won't just immediately close everything. Do so you remember we, we, we talked about the sessions? Yeah, like it's go, the session goes out. Yes. There yeah. are several sessions going on and some of them are waiting to time out. Okay. 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 And uh, as I said before, it was giving me information about just the port numbers. Uh, if uh, I'm a newbie, I have no idea what these ports are. I can enable this switch minus D, uh, which is basically going to turn those into the name HTTPS. Along this is also going to give me information on this what is going browser. to be my new favorite. <laughs> That's great. And also this is going to also tell me, uh, okay, uh, what kind of application Haifa, is connected. Haifa, sorry, Haifa, can you mute yourself? There's a lot of noise coming. <laughs> okay. Let's start over to another switch if we can find something. Mm. then minus a is going to display all connections and listening ports even that is not being used so let's do let's add with the help of minus a so as you can see this is established these connections has been established but just take a look these are the listening ports means my computer is ready to listen on these ports these all But this is not a good security practice, by the way. We need to close these ports if these are open. So basically it is telling me that these um, multiple uh, uh, ports are open. And if you want, I can connect and I, I'm listening on these ports actively. Okay. Then what else do we have? Something we can use. Uh, but just FYI, some ports are listening. Uh, they're open for normal like connections for your computer to work with other computers, and you know your own local adapter have 
when you see 127.0.0.1, that's a loop address, right? So you you don't, exactly. yeah. that's not like your open address. It may be using just your own adapter to listen to things that is happening inside your computer. So yeah, yeah. make sure you guys don't go and start blocking everything, you know, <laughs> something will not work. Then. Yes. This is just for the verification, you know, we can check what is happening and what is going on in our network. Some rogue PC may be connected, so you can identify directly just by taking a look of the IP, IP, and then you can ping and you can resolve that IP to identify what host basically that is. Okay, other than that, uh, we have this, um, we, we don't use this software, but let's try this one net stat minus f uh basically it is going to resolve the fully qualified domain name just like in case of job skill we have www.jobskillshare.org so this is called fqdn so as you can see here uh, maybe somewhere i'm connected to amazon or i think this uh job skill share basically hosted on amazon so as you can see it is giving me a uh, fully qualified DN domain name here. Okay. Then, um, uh, yeah, the, this minus E displays the Ethernet statistics. Uh, if we want to see how many data or the bytes have been received or sent, we can just check from here as well very quickly just by putting minus e option and this is also very good information like how many unicast packets are being sent uh, from your lan interface card how many uh, bytes are sent received and sent how many non unicast packets are sent how many have been discarded or how many are in the error state so this is also could be a very helpful piece of information so i think this is enough for the next set we have some other tools like our ip config uh sometime uh, we have some dns issue with the help of ip config slash flash, uh, slash flush dns you are going to flush your dns information and you know i'm going to discuss this thing a lot in your v2 module then every computer has some kind of mac addresses or even every network interface card that is attached on your computer has different mac address it has different mac address it one has different even your virtual machine has some kind of uh, virtual network interface card which is having different mac address and these all will be a unique so to uh, just to identify to get those you very quickly you can go through this command and then we have r uh, r basically will show how many computers um your your host machine has learned by the way how many mac addresses it has learned maybe you in your lan environment we you know in the r the r is a complete chapter as its own so we're going to discuss r a lot in detail and the cc and a switching section is totally dependent on r so what i was uh, showing is uh, we have the lan environment we have let's suppose 100 computers connected in the same environment with the same subnet this your host of computer will have the information about these all host machines in using the help of our protocol then we have ns lookup we have one dedicated section uh talking about ns lookup we will we'll go a lot in detail system info is going to give you the information about your computer and i will i will de demonstrate this one as well route print uh, is just like if you are familiar in a routing environment we have command show ip route which is going to give me information how many best paths do i have 
So in uh, command prompt, you can have route name. My uh, this greater the sign, if we use in the command prompt, this is also very handy and useful command. For example, if this is the system information, uh, that is uh, very verbose information. And we want to save this information in my text. So you can use uh, greater than sign and you can save in uh, somewhere in your computer to send to, to some your friend or some your boss or colleague in format of the notepad. Then we have five more. Uh, so I will give you a demo, then you will have a better idea about this. So let's very quickly, I'm going to give a demo about these uh, each uh, command, but I'm not gonna go a lot in detail because we have already covered so many concepts, so you will be confused. I will clear the screen. So IP config, very basic command, and you will use a lot. It will give you the information uh, about what uh, network interface cards you have, like Ethernet adopter I have on a VMware, which is virtual environment. Uh, this is also a virtual environment. And this is my physical local network interface cards. Uh, then we have a wireless, and then these are, um, uh, can say the, what are the IP addressing I'm using on my relevant uh, network interface card. Like on uh, my LAN, I'm using this kind of IP, 192.168.3. For my wireless LAN, uh, which is not connected, it is media has been disconnected. For Ethernet adopter, VMware, I'm using these kind of addressing. So very quickly, you can go over and check the IP connectivity. Then you have IP config slash flush DNS. So basically, if I will hit enter, it is going to erase all DNS information that resides in my uh, host machine, which I do not want because I want to keep DNS information. And for the DNS, uh, we have a dedicated section in week uh, two module again. Then the, we have get Mac. If I will simply press or uh, type get Mac and hit enter, it is very quickly going to give me information about the Mac addresses. But the problem is it is not giving me what this physical address is connected with which interface or which NIC card, network interface card. To get that, you type get Mac and type slash B, hit enter. If I will just expand this one. Here you can see my VM virtual is using this physical interface card, uh, physical address or the MAC address, my local area connection or LAN card is using this uh, physical MAC address and my wireless is using this uh, MAC address. So see how quickly uh, you just uh, uh, get the knowledge about the MAC addresses of your uh, network interface cards. So this is also some kind of very handy command. Then we have R. It comes with uh, a lot of uh, options. Let's uh, do with R minus A. And it is going to give me the information uh, what other host machine my computer has learned so far. So in this case, for example, if I give you information, this is my gateway. And this is a physical address that is correlated to my access point. So instead of resolving this MAC address, it will send an ARP and it will receive ARP, reply, and then I will get this MAC address. It already keeps this information saved in its ARP table. Why? When I want to uh, reach my access point, 
it will go directly to MAC address and just go directly to the access point instead going through some another process which I'm going to discuss in um, subsequent lectures. As I said, NS lookup, uh, we have uh, one dedicated section for NS lookup. But just to um, give you information what it does, if you hit NS lookup, it is going to give me information what I, my gateway address is connected. And if I want to go a lot in detail, I can go like set type. Uh, I want to know information about the mail exchange server, about some, uh, let's go, uh, like www.jobskillshare.org. If, I, hand, if I, I hit enter, it will show me my mail server basically uh, have uh, this uh, name of the server is ns1.cloudfair.net. So this is going to give me the information about my mail exchange server. So not to worry about if you are not getting this at this time, because uh, my intention is just to make sure you have this command in your tool belt. And this is we gonna discuss a lot in detail in subsequent videos. If you want to exit, just type exit and you will be in the command prompt again. Then the other tool we have system info, which is going to give me uh, the purpose information about my computer. Just type system and info. As you can see how quickly it is going to give me a nitty gritty detail about what my computer is. What is the processor type multiprocessor? I'm using Microsoft Corporation, the operating system version and the build. What kind of operating system name is Windows 10 Pro? And there is a ton and ton of information. Then we have route print. If you do route print, So this is just like um, IP routing table. Uh, it is having information about the multiple gates, for example, and which is the best one I'm going to route from this. So this table is going to give, in, in, give you the information about that. And where, where, wherever you will see the network destination is 0.0.0.0, .0 it is nothing but your default gateway. Just, you know, I don't want to, discuss a lot this one what is default uh, I default route because uh, you will be confused then so keep it for the routing uh, topics then I, I, as I said for example we have system info This all information I want to send using email address. Of course, I want to save this information somewhere. So for that, we can use the greater than command and we can type uh, just a minute. We will use the command system info, then greater than sign and where we want to save this file with the what name Let's put the name of file is uh, system info dot text. When I will hit enter, and if I take a look of directory, uh, there's so much going on. But by the way, if you will go into C Windows System thirty two, you will find. You will find this file system info.txt, which will be having the information about your system information. So this is how, uh, how very quickly you can say whatever the command you are going to give, and it will be saved in this uh, text notepad with the help of greater than sign. So this is the syntax. Then the last command is slash more. 
and this is also very helpful and handy. Like in this case, if I type directory, and you can see there are so many things, uh, so many pages uh, it is going through, but I do not want this behavior. I want page by page. So what you can do, you can type uh, directory, then pipe command and more. Now you will hit enter, you will see it is gonna go page by page. Okay. So our demo time uh, ends here. The next part of this training, we will use different command line videos from our practice lab uh, that we use in our system. So if you want to do a practical practice, just like an instructor, you may want to get a membership on jobskillshare.org, uh, especially premium membership, because you will see that we will be jumping around in different courses because we have these type of modules inside courses. For example, in CompTIA, there's a full command line uh, set right here that you will be working on hands-on. So we are going to add some of the videos from different modules over here uh, to enhance this video for your learning. Thank you. The task kill command. And here in this video, we're going to show you this command. So if the screen is not clear, so first run the CLS and this, then we're going to run the task kill task list command. So for killing any task, you must know the task and the list of that, all the tasks from which you want to select any of the tasks to kill. So before that, you run the task list command and here you will find there are a lot more tasks that are running because definitely when you're using operating system or any operating system, there are a few more services running on the background that is allowing you letting you to use the resources and doing your own daily operations. So here we cannot easily see all the tasks here. So we're going to type the task list and we're going to just type the notepad here to show that how the task is being added. So as we open the notepad, you can see the notepad is now came under the task list. Now we're going to type the task kill because we're going to shut down. We're going to kill the task that is running in the notepad form. So for that, we're going to type task kill space full slash F. F means forcefully because we don't need little laps in between to kill the task. That's why we are adding this argument and space full slash I am notepad.exe so it will do what it will kill this task and close this application and whatever it is sometimes there are application in the task sometimes there are services so it will terminate and yes here you can see the message that tells that this process with that PID has been terminated now after that if you again run the task list command you see here there's no notepad file there's no notepad task here and also you can kill the task by typing the PID the process ID of that specific task so you can type 6740 any specific task for the testing you can kill by typing the ID and here this is the CMT the same CMD which we are using. So if you type that, it will close the CMD. And there you go, the CMD is closed. And that's how we can check how it kills the task by using the PID, the process IDs. So let us open the command prompt again to further explore this task kill command. Now here, if you want to explore in the same way and want to know other arguments that you can add with the task kill command, so simply type task kill space forward slash question mark and it will show you other arguments and additions that you can apply with this task kill command. Exercise 1, task 13, the GP update command. And here in this task video, we're going to show you how this GP update command works. So here, as you can see, we have the command prompt on the screen, it's visible. 
and here if we type the GP update without any parameter so you'll find that it will update will clear the cache from this client machine to the active directory domain controller machine and it will just sync your machines policies local policies with the group policies so you will get this message once the command is executed that it is done successfully then if you add a parameter forward slash force so it will do all the work with the force with in within no matter of time in quickly quick way so if you want to do things in a quick way in an instant so you can add this forward slash force argument with this command and then execute let's say if you want to run the GP update by default user and the computer policies are applied so you can choose to apply either user or computer so you can add another argument this forward slash target colon user so because the policies are up of two types the computer base or the user base so here you're typing that we want new policies on the user level so all the policies that were configured and altered on the user level it's been synced and applied now the default number of seconds to wait for the policy processing is 600 seconds so you can remove this wait time and add another argument with the numbers and reduce this wait time for the GP update. So it would be simple. You can type GP update space forward slash wait and then you can type the number, the time, the seconds on which you want to reduce this implementation of the policies. So in that way, in the in this way, you can type GP update space forward slash wait colon zero. So we are reducing this six hundred seconds to zero. So it will it won't take this much seconds and time to apply policy. Now let's clear the screen, and if you want to further explore this GP update argument, so you could do the same thing as you did with the previous commands like space forward slash question mark so it will show you other arguments and additions that you can add the keywords that you can add with the command and explore different features and get benefit in different ways by using this command the GP result command and this is another command that helps you in the group policy section and here for the set of policies which get applied these policies are about how to the application programs resource base on the network and the operating system behave for the particular user or a computer so these policies can overlap in nature and this GP result command generates the resultant set of the applicable policies after considering the overlapping so here in this video you're going to learn how to use this gp result command and to use the gp result command to to see the functions you will need to follow these steps that we are going to show you so if you type gp result space forward slash r so it will display the rsop summary data of the policies and the user and the security groups so you can maximize the command prompt window if you further want to see each and everything and once you realize once you find out all this stuff and the policies that are applied and working right now so there's you will find there's a lot of stuff and a lot of things a lot of policies applied on the user level on the computer level so you can easily find out the difference and once you get this output from the GP result command you can also display all the information about the group policy and this work by adding another argument with this GP result command now here the machine is disconnected and once when it happens 
click to the reconnect button and it will reconnect the machine as it were connected on the same moment on the same point so let me scroll up and reach to that point where we left and here I'm gonna run another GP result command with another argument and that would be full slash Z so it gonna do what it will display all the information about the group policy and let's press enter to execute and here you can see the output of this command spans through multiple pages so you need to scroll and read the information and you can also find out the details from the screenshots so this is the output and it tells you the each specific policy that is applied on each object in your environment in your group policy so once after getting this much detail about the group policy and actually this is allowing you let's say for example if you applied some policies on the machine and the machine didn't get that policy it is not implemented at the moment so you can run this gp result forward slash z command and it will show you which policy is being altered and configured for which object so there are lots of benefits and a lot of different you could say tools you're getting by learning these commands and you're learning different dimension and directions through you can fix and troubleshoot the issues in active directory now once getting this much lengthy output you can clear the screen or you can run another command that shows the details of a remote computer it display the policy details of a remote computer so you can type gp result for say s space that specific remote machine and then forward slash r so it will provide you the detail of that remote computer the policies that are implemented on that specific machine so you can explore you can find out the policies of another machine of another remote computer within your domain within your network by running this command the net use command and this command is used to connect your computer system to the shared folder or drive on the network so by using this command it's possible to have the direct access to such shared directories and treating it as it as if it is your local directory or drive so there are different variations with this command which we're going to show you later in this video so basically in a simple way you can type net use command to view the existing network connection so you type net use space z colon so you will start seeing the shared drive and there you go the command is successfully executed and you have currently this detail within this network drive command now we can also map a network share or drive or specific drive letter on your system so you can use net net space use the space x colon double backslash plab 81 c dollar c is a c location false slash persistent colon yes so when you type this value so the value yes means that the mapping will be available when you log on to the system next time and when you go with the no that means the mapping is limited to this session only so if you minimize the command prompt and want to see go to the file explorer so you're going to find this x drive here on your system on your machine and you go with yes so it will be available when you re-log to your system again now if you want to delete this network drive because if you don't need that drive and the time and want to delete that specific drive so for that you have basic and simple argument of this net use command that you can add with it and run and here you need to specify the letter first so it's, you can type net dash use dash that specific letter which you need to find out from the file explorer so it's up to you you remember so don't need to open the fire file explorer type net space use space 
x column space forward slash and delete so this argument will help you to delete your specific network drive that you just mapped but now you don't you want to delete that one and you will if you want to find out that thing so you can go to the file explorer and one of explore other arguments of this net use so simply type net space use space for slash question mark so it will show you that there are arguments in the keywords that you can use along with the net use use the net user command and this command allows you to perform user account related task on the computer so this command allows you to create new user you can modify the user account related parameters and this account has various parameter to it so each one of them perform a specific task so using this command you can manage local and both the domain based user account so let's open the cmd and type net space user so this will show you the list of user on your local system so right now we're going to use it on the local system and type net space user and there you go show the list of all local users you have in this machine so for getting the list you just need to type net space user and it will show you then if you will want to view the information about specific users you can type net space user space that space space that specific user which is right now administrator and if you want to know the arguments so run forward slash question mark and right now I want to see the specific user so I type net space user administrator and now it's showing me what the information about the specific user the administrator and all the permissions password things and account expiry and other workstation allowed and last hour logon allowed and local group membership global group membership all the basic information about the user it is showing here after executing that command then we can simply find out other things and we can manage account credentials so if you want to create new account by using the net user so we can type net user space any name like we're using Wilson and then just directly type this exact password that you want to set and then space for slash add for slash time and then colon all so it will directly in an instant create the account and when you add for slash add parameter it adds the user account and the user is configured to log on all days of the week so on the above we miss the remaining arguments of this command that's why we see we saw this error now we're going to use these for slash add and then for slash times colon all so now it is the proper way to execute the command in order to create the new user and the command is successfully executed as you can see the message now you can recall the net user command and just see the list of user and there you go you have the Wilson in the list just added after you create it and if you want to delete any user, so simply type net space user space that specific user, then space false slash and delete. So it will delete the newly created user. Or you can delete any previous user you have on your local machine. And then again recall basic net user command. I will show you the list and you won't find that user that you just deleted so verification is a good thing you need to you always have to verify after doing things so there you go there's no entry of the Wilson here and we already showed you how to explore its other arguments and keywords that you could use with the command to do different things the command and here in this video we're going to show you different functions of this copy command and how it is useful to copy any file any text file or any file because you are familiar with the GUI environment how to copy things and it's so easy peasy to just right click on any file and copy things so first let's open the command prompt with the administrator privilege and type space null space 
dot, not dot, the grid and then symbol, then ABC text file, that would be any file you have, and dot text. So this command does what? It's an easy to create a text file using a notepad, but it, uh, it's a bit tricky because you're doing in a command prompt. And if you then run the dir, so you will see the file. Now, after creating the file, you can simply just locate the file in the directory and then type copy space that specific name and the location where you want to copy that file. So it would be like C colon users and it would be whatever, it, whatever you like, whatever you, wherever you want to copy that file and it will be copied. And if you add this forward slash Y extension, so when you type a copy to a file to a destination, the same file exists, but you will be prompt with a warning. And if the file exists in the same directory, so you can still override without getting the warning. So if you want to override the file on the same specific location, so you need to add this forward slash Y parameter. So this is suppressing the prompt for confirmation to override a file on that same location. So here we're going, we're going to copy the same file on that same location. And here we are already adding forward slash Y. So it didn't ask for the confirmation for overriding. Now we're going to, if you want to verify and explore other arguments, so just type forward slash question mark in the X copy command. And this command is useful to copy the file as well as the directories from the source location to any specified location. And while copying this directory, this command also copies the subdirectories of that directory and as well if it's present. So to performing to experience this command on the CMD, first let move let's move to the practice labs resources, but practice labs portal. In here on the command prompt, we're going to type x copy space forward slash y and here start dot text space c column backslash user this would be the location and here it will copy the, the directory as well as the subdirectory and it shows that it has these directories and now you can see the one file is copied abc.txt along with these directories so in this way this command it simply allows you and enables you to download the file along with its directory. Now we're going to copy these folders that have multiple directories within. So if you go to the C and create the new folder, let's say PLAPS. And now if we create another folder in that folder, so we create the test file here within this folder subdirectory it would be so we're creating another file text test.2 here for this command now you can see we have two files within this plab folder and then we're going to copy this plab directory to another location so we did the same we type x copy space c backslash plab and there we're going to provide the destination location and then put forward slash e so you can see the both files are copied along with the directories along with the single directory and if you do the dir space download to see the download directory so there you go you found the both files here so in this way you directly copied the internal files of that folder to that specific location right so in the same way you can you want if you want to explore this command just type forward slash question mark and you will see and you will find out the different arguments that you can add and here in this command we're going to show you the robocopy command and it copies the file data and all the necessary parameters have to be passed in the command itself 
So the source directory, destination directory, and file in whose content are to get copied. Like details are specified. So the robocopy command will keep the original file and create what? A replica of the same at the specified location. So in this task, we're going to show you how to use the robocopy command in an environment in the command prompt. So let's start with the CMD. And here, as you can see in the previous command, we already created directories with the xcopy command video, the last one. Now here, let's scroll up and type robocopy first to clear the screen. And then we're going to type the robocopy space downloads space c colon backslash users so this users would be the specified location and now it shows this data this detail and it shows what that it created the replica of the original file and it copy all the content in the source directory the destination directory and the file the content is just copied so the details are specified and it kept the original file and create a replica of the same at the specified location so this is the benefit of this robocopy command and there are few other and various parameters of this command we have and if you want to see if you want to know about those parameters just simply do what type robocopy space forward slash question mark and then execute so it will show you the other rest of other arguments that you could use with that command to do different things and use in different environment in different scenarios so it will show you the rest of other arguments here on the screen so that's it for this video stay with us and thanks for watching now this is great knowledge so far after this of course there's this is not an ending uh, skill so you can go to google type cmd doc and you will see this Microsoft link click on it and then you can use so many other commands there is available inside uh, for you to practice so you can create some batch files after this so if you feel like you're really good at using these commands now then go and find some more commands that can help you with your job or your future skills but try to get into scripting then once you get into scripting you'll be able to use two commands together maybe you want to uh, copy one command and then do something with it, delete it later on. So create some batch files. These are the scripting you can do on CMD. So create something like that where you can actually achieve more out of it. And that's where your mind will start to accept uh, advanced learning. And the more you get into this stuff, the later on you're going to do a lot of advanced stuff uh, in DevOps or maybe you want to become a... Uh, a sysadmin where you have to work with a lot of partial and that's where things can go uh, into that so maybe you can start with the echo command where you can start doing that batch files and everything as you can see uh, here there is some information about it so you can use it there's examples out here and uh, have uh, you know um, a go with this because this is really going to help you thank you so much for watching this don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel to see more videos like this